All right, guys, we're back. We're gonna be working on the Bonneville motor today. Yep. It's been a, a minute since we even talked about this, but basically um, the Bonneville, we rebuilt, so December 2019, the Bonneville blew up. Oh, fuck. No, 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 October. October, really? October. And you brought it over December? I don't know. But anyways, it got taken here in December. Mm -hmm. We had a spare 3.8 Camaro motor from yep. Camaro Project from F. From Project F. Over there. There's Vince doing the tuning thing. Um, and we rebuilt that. We put cool stuff in it since we had the time. We didn't rebuild it actually at we all. Just we just put didn't, new gaskets. We didn't tear into the bottom end at all. We just yeah. new gaskets. Put a um, ZZP Nick cam and... XP. XP. Oh, is the XP? Oh, no, was it was, it was, it was no a VS, actually. VS cam. That was it. It was a VS cam. Um... And that was pretty much the only actual engine work we did. We also resurfaced the block ourselves. The cylinder heads, did they get resurfaced? Yeah, by a... Uh... Professionally. So the block did not get resurfaced. The uh, heads did. We did it ourselves with, like, a grinder. And not a good idea to do that, I guess. Um, they said it would, would, would have worked, but it wasn't great. Um, anyways, we put it in the Bonneville. We drove it around a couple times. You saw the video us driving around. We re rebuilt the transmission, too. And um, after that, started getting water in the engine again. So there was some kind of leak. Yeah. So immediately after I take it to put the new tires on, which at that point we had ran it that day. We had thought it was fine. So I'm like, okay, let's get new tires put on the car. I do that. It's about nine miles there, nine miles back, give or take. And then I get back and notice all my oil is filled with water. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great on this fresh motor uh that's not good fresh so we fresh yeah like 166,000 mile motor didn't um, break into it at all so w what we do is we i drained and refilled the uh the oil with brand new stuff and then we did that again uh when we and when i brought it back over to davis's so essentially three oil flushes or three oil changes in the basically the first week of it running and then immediately thereafter i i uh i uh cleaned the coolant system and we could see oil coming up out of the radiator yeah, and then, and then and it was thinking, flipped it yeah, was flipped at that point yeah we were thinking oh well maybe it's just uh maybe it's just getting the the i don't know what it, what it's doing but no it was swapping places both places so water was making it in the engine and then engine oil was making it into my radiator my whole cooling system yeah it's messed up so uh we really had no idea how to how to solve that problem, so we took the motor out. Long story short, yeah, you saw short, that in the video series where we yeah. just we wanted to fix it for the last time. And in that, there's only a couple of interfaces or places where water and oil can interface. Which mm -hmm. one is the rear, which has high pressure oil that could get into the coolant? That's mm -hmm. where we suspected the issue was. Common places where coolant leaks into the motor is the lower intake manifold and possibly the front cover. Yep. So which. All of those were fresh. Uh, also, so, we were, the balance shaft thing, too. We, that's one of the reasons. That was we, one of the issues. It wasn't running for yeah. quite a while, even though it was technically the car was able to. Yeah. So what it ended up... Rough. Yeah, it was rough. And so I just put the car away because we had other things going on and we couldn't figure out the car. So we, I put away the car. Anyways, we bring the car back and then it starts having these issues. And so uh, on in December this year... Uh, Actually, last year, I guess, 2020. Yeah. I replaced the whole front cover. I resealed it because we did the uh, the balancer shaft fix. Mm -hmm. And so the whole front cover was taken off and resealed. New gasket, RTV. And, okay, that didn't solve... That solved the uh, the balancing issue. That didn't solve... Immediately thereafter, we noticed the uh, oil and coolant swapping places. So, we're okay. Well, let's check the... Oh, and by the way, I resealed this thing, the front cover, twice, I believe. Yeah. And then... Okay, pull the engine out. We do the rear cover. I don't think we even had a gasket. I think we just RTV'd it, but yeah. that doesn't make sense because I bought a whole or, kit of gaskets. Or we never even touched the back because we didn't touch the bottom Well, the rear end. cover was original and we didn't take it out. Yeah, I that, don't know. that could have been... We don't know. Too. And so when we took it off, it had RTV on every surf, on every part it that we It was degraded, though. Just didn't have the gasket that we could see, so that could have been it. But at that point in time, I was like... Yeah, we might have fixed it with that. We might, we might, might have, have fixed it. We might have fixed it, but it's still a motor with 160,000 miles that had water in it several times. So so after the recover, we tested it, and it didn't fix it. 
but also we re we re rtv'd the back and there's some spots where the gasket is very particular so i'm guessing that that gasket needed to be there but at that point in time this motor had been filled with water three separate times and mm -hmm. ran shortly not a lot but th the bearings are already 160 66 000 miles on it no I'm, I'm done with that engine that motor is in the bonneville now that's going in the trash that someone is likely to buy it from me some people have already reached out to ask 36 or or it's going to the the scrap yard i don't care um but you could also keep it tear it apart and then have the block checked and if it's good then you can yeah. have a spare motor and honestly i don't have the space and that's true for that but uh yeah but uh, and we, so that's the saga of the bonneville so here we are now we're trying not to try to save time because i already see it's five minutes now um so we got this motor got to the machine shop did everything they needed to we put the crank in we put the rods in and then i noticed after i we put all of these in that it's pretty difficult to spin There's this thing over if you see this resistance. you can see the engine literally torquing out of the way and then once it gets spinning it's easy it's it's it not fine. difficult but you still wouldn't be able to do it by hand yeah just and then if you stop it will then then yeah if you let it sit it'll be too difficult and put a perspective this is fence's uh 408 stroker that we just built um so at 6.7 liters, you know, V8, it in this form with the rotating assembly crank rods torqued down, I could get both hands on the back of the crank and with some force, I could turn it over by hand. There is no way you can turn this over by hand at yeah. all. And you struggle with the breaker bar fully extended to start. Yeah. And um, I, I have, I'm skeptical of, an, of a, a piston ring not being where it should be and being pinched somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Davis has uh, some, I think, is a little skeptical of the bearings that I have, that I bought. Yeah, because um, just to explain, this uh, crank got polished, mm -hmm. so material was m removed from it, yep. and then he has oversized bearings to make up the difference, and I'm thinking maybe those oversized bearings are too big, and that's what's causing the resistance inside of it. But either way, we're going to pop all the pistons out, see how it turns over with just nothing in it with you know one at a time see if there are any ring ring issues um but that's what our next you know course of action is here because we can't so, we can't let this go on like this yeah i i want to address it now in case this is an actual problem like and, chances are we could send it and just throw it in or whatever and it'll work itself out but that's not what you want to do with no not because this one we want to do it right we want to stop fucking with the bonneville we want it to yeah. run and and if you see here the machine shop wrote uh r30 on the crankshaft yeah, right it's here hard to see. it is hard to see you'd have to see it from an angle and then basically um they had to uh undersize the pistons um where the bearings go 30 under so they we need 30 over bearings that's what i got on rock auto and then you can see right here it's much easier to see that the uh, from the polishing the uh, crank went uh, 10 thousandths under yeah. and so i got 10 thousandths oversized bearings yeah these those should all, all be correct they, these should be correct is what the machine shop but, told him and that's what he got off rock auto but you know rock auto there's a drop down menu you select but yeah, they could always the give you part. anything yeah true so basically what we I'm also gonna... don't have the boxes anymore yeah uh, to see that's all long gone so basically i'm gonna be taking out as many pistons as i need and then after reinstalling each one i'm gonna be spinning the crank and make sure that that yeah, resistance you can, is gone or there still you can take out one at a time mm -hmm. turn it over one at a time until yep. you remove one and maybe it spins over nicer or you take all of them out and there's still resistance take off the main caps yeah, in fact, um, we we turned it before any of the pistons in, and it was it was easy. That it sh it was where it should it should have been, and uh, but we're gonna see this in a minute. So we're gonna come back. Yeah. Uh, after we're af at least make some progress or find some information out that we don't know right now, but uh, let's get started. You. Yep. Three weeks later. All right, guys, we're back. It's been a little bit. Last saw last thing you saw actually was us. Uh, taking each bearing off one at a time just to check uh clearly you know there's been some some progress here yeah. uh <laughs> there's been some progress and some not so much progress like as in bank account you know less yep. progress there so more money to be spent basically when we were taking it apart we found the bearing six or the six i don't know what actual number it is in line but it was the re rearest most uh rod yep. we took the cap off and the bearing was all 
messed up. We yeah. unfortunately didn't record that part. Yeah, we didn't. But uh, basically the issue was, I'm not sure what we recorded, what we didn't. Um, to spin the motor over, it was pretty tough. And with no heads or anything on it, it shouldn't be like that. We thought it was a ring. Ended up seeing take number six off and the bearing was all scraped up. Huh, that's not normal. We plastic gauged it. It seemed normal. So loaded up the engine, loaded up the uh, all the rods and pistons into the truck, and then off to the machine shop again it goes. So what ended up happening is four out of the six rods were not perfectly circular. Apparently the so, heat... Yeah, this, this to remind everybody, this motor Tristan bought from Elliot and it was a rod knocking motor. We knew, we knew that going into it. We were just going to replace all the bearings and uh, I guess the the rod diameter or whatever was not checked. Yeah, and so um, specifically, if a motor throws a bearing, um, which it did, the machinist told me to bring him a good piston, bring him the one that threw the, the, the bearing, and then, because those will get out of round, and that's exactly what happened, except a total of four out of six uh, were out of round like that, and so they ended up machining all six to be identical this time, new bearings, and what was also an issue is some of the piston rings we forgot to deburr. So like one of them was physically stuck in the piston. Didn't notice that, but that's not good. So the machinist ended up uh, deburring the rings and getting those all good to go. What they also did is they also completely took out the crank, took out, well, the rods were already taken out. They completely washed the block and the crank again yeah. and, and the pistons after they did their machine work, which was kind of nice. That added to the price. I actually didn't notice until we got it out of the bag that they also painted my heads the same color as they painted my block. So they're not yep. just a shitty half red, half <laughs> yeah. stock, you know, looking. And so I'm, I'm actually really happy that they did that. Um, and so with the assembly um, of the heads, putting on um, the crank, the rods, the machining, the uh, piston rings all together. It's $600, which was, you know, more than I was quoted, but it's more work than they thought. So they weren't, they did not think that they were gonna have to machine all six rods, but that's the way it is. So it's $600 on top of $500 that was original that it took to get this thing machined. So around $1,100, not including parts yeah. right now. So Jesus. that's unfortunate. And next time I go to the next time I go to the machinist, I'm just going to give them all the pistons that I plan to use, so this doesn't happen. So I, not I don't have to go there a second yeah. time after putting together the the engine. But now I mean now at least it's uh, it's put together for the most part. Now we just need the Bonneville over here. We need the cam, the lifters, and the push rods. And then once once that's out of that engine, this engine can be fully assembled. I'm gonna possibly look into seeing if there's any metal gaskets for the front and rear cover yeah let us know i haven't seen any on the market yet like haven't seen any on like particularly uh, the rock auto for example yeah the front and rear like when we were building vince's trans am they had metal gaskets with you know rubber or whatever yeah. these ones are just paper with some like i don't know what kind of substance it is it's, like it silicone is, it's kind of like rubber but yeah not as good it's like a silicone material um and also if you see Got the metal head gaskets. Yeah, the multi-layer metal so head gaskets. Those are that's nice. real nice. But yeah, they did a really good job. They resurfaced the cylinder heads, the yeah. mating surface here. Have you taken your lower intake manifold to them yet? I know I've been forgetting to take that to them, but so that's uh, more money. I still need to. That is more money potentially <laughs> if they have to do anything to it. Yeah. Because I just want them to check the edge and see if it's actually uh, perfectly flat. Oh, nice. They painted this too. Yeah, they really prob like probably painted the, the valves and everything too. It's fine. <laughs> your, oh, they did. They did, actually. <laughs> they did paint the valves, but not a big deal. Um, these guys do yeah. some good work. Let's see. It. Right in there. Yeah, these guys do some really good work, and I'm really happy that the engine is at least in, in a position where we're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, that's what I wanted because after that, um, after that setback, I just wanted this to... to hurry up and be be ready for us yeah and uh so paid paid them a pretty penny to put this thing together but they did some good work they said that yeah definitely they said that like just the assembly of the heads and putting the pistons in all that since they're uh pretty meticulous with their work that was actually over half of the price so
Luger. Does that work? Yeah. It fits. Interesting. Yep. I also <clears throat> bought an extra set of head studs because I was used to the, you know, the LS style where you buy a set per per head. Yeah. Yeah. That's his crank bolt works for this thing. Interesting. Also, like also, uh, we clean up the garage. It doesn't look super clean. I mean, but if you've seen our other videos, literally we're up to like right here with just jugs of oil. Like it's totally clean now. All the excess is gone. I got to clean the floors, but all our tools are back where they need to be. So much more room in here. Just uh, forgot to mention that little bit. Yeah, get that 24 mil. Yeah, we recently just went on a dump run and uh, took a bunch of our oil, bunch of our just everything. Oh, damn, that is a big boy. Oh, jeez, it is a 24, isn't it? Yeah, I told you. You did tell me. I thought I you was lying. <laughs> oh, it's got a ton for a circle. Oh, yeah, go. so easy. We Jesus. Can't... Yeah, you can see how easy that is. And before, before, it was like... Really tough. Oh, man, I would have to do this. You'd, I mean, you saw it in the video uh, earlier. Oh, it yeah, took a yeah. while. Ooh. Take quite a bit of strength just to get I it like started. That. I like that. I was like a little concerned because I was like, oh, I can't do it by hand. But the heads are on. That that creates more resistance. Well, this is, this is serious, seriously not bad. I bet I could get it with two hands here. Definitely not bad. I can't really reach that. I'm going to flip it <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah, you can't reach that. Yeah, let's flip it over. You don't wanna you don't wanna freaking get cut by the whatever I was cut with last time trying to spin it over. Keep, keep going. There you go. Yeah, I wanna see if I can turn it over by hand here. I can't really. There's not a lot. There's not a lot to grab onto, really. Vince says I was able to. Maybe both sides here. Uh, I can. I saw it budge. It moving a little bit. I saw it budge. Enough. Not enough. I wonder. Grab on. No. 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 But that's okay. It turned over super easily with the breaker bar, which it should. And as obviously because they took the whole crank out, but they uh, they torqued all of these to spec because they threw the um, with all the assembly lube on it. They just straight up threw the crankshaft in the. Uh, the old parts washer and got it nice and clean. Yeah, all these, the rods look clean. Everything looks clean on here now, so you have an actual proper motor to put in the Bonneville finally. Yeah, finally. Uh, Just took, you know, how many, like one, mo one motor swap and three motor took poles. A, took a whole motor swap to get this one right. And then, yep. That's ass. But you know what, we'll get there. Um, but that's all the progress that we have today. I mean, we could talk about our plans. On either Friday or this weekend, we're gonna try and get the Bonnie over here and uh try and take that motor out and so basically gonna take the whole week off of work and gonna get the bonnie over here take the engine out yeah apart take the cam out uh the lifters and push rods i probably already have those out or the lifters are just sitting but the push rods are out yeah the, the lifters will still be in there but they just have to be taken out these are the heads to the yeah you need so. the you need the balance shaft you need the lifters you need the push rods yep. you need the oil pickup you need the oil pan front rear cover um and then the everything else i mean lower intake manifold Most all the accessories those parts are just laying in my garage right now the front and rear cover i have spares that are just sitting from the okay. motor we can just use those again um it shouldn't matter but yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing this weekend to next week. Look for videos on that if you're interested. Um, I'm sure if, you, if you're if you here, you are interested. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's all we really got to talk about. Um, that's strange. This bolt hole goes right into where like the lifter that's is. Weird. So if what it was heck? long enough, if what it is was this? long enough, it's both of these. These are just, I think these are, oh, this these are just to hold that little guard. Yeah. And then this, I don't really know. I think that's it's not, the front it's, cover. It's not part of the front cover. It goes down like that. Oh, and then no. I have no idea what that is. Plug that up. Oh, yeah, I know. There's actually, uh, we actually stole this off of Project F. What is it? This. Is it that? Yep, that goes there. We'll have to, like, we, uh, we were trying to get a bolt for Vince's car and uh, took that off uh, Project F, so that needs to go back on Project oh. F. But we're going to have to we have a uh, spare. sealant that. Yeah, I don't know what that. why that's there. It's weird. Oh, but yeah, we'll definitely have to make sure we seal that so that it doesn't just leak oil out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would just, yeah, definitely don't want that. 
But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all our plans, guys. Yeah, and, motors all put uh, together. Catch us, catch us uh, later with that. If you're looking at my valve springs, you're like, uh, it's something ain't yeah, right. It's so dirty. The freaking. The they used parts, to be blue. The, yeah, the parts washer took the paint off. They didn't think that was gonna happen, but they're like, that's totally normal. In fact, they're like, better, better it happened in our parts washer than in your engine because that actually is a common issue, I guess. Interesting. I, I guess. I, uh, I guess. I would hate that. Apparently, he says a lot of Fords do that. Weird. Guess so. Um, but yeah, guys, so uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a Patreon. We've also got stickers. We also got possibly some merch on the way. We talk about a lot of merch. We just need how to do it. It's, it's because the actual process of getting the product is pretty hard because it's expensive it's expensive we've gone through this we've we've crunched the numbers we need to make a video about it probably just explaining to to you guys uh what we're having to deal with but yeah we might have some shirts on the way yep. we got some designs we got uh we got already art made by an artist ready to go we just need to figure out what avenue we're going to go because shirts are expensive uh, most places want more even in bulk buy they want more per shirt than we can sell and make money off of because if they want 21 plus dollars for a shirt there's yeah. no money to be made it's like we're hardly not any a shirt for more than 30 bucks no one will buy that and no one will want to pay that money unless unless you guys uh, could commit in the comments and tell us you would pay for a 30 dollar shirt <laughs> which we wouldn't even want to offer a 30 dollar shirt seriously. to be honest but um that's where we're at right now so we're yep. we're trying to find other avenues like maybe vinyl and try that avenue maybe make our own shirts um but yeah so um that's pretty much all there there's left to say yep we'll, we'll catch you later guys see you guys